QuickBooks Online 2024 Accounts Receivable Aging Reports. Get ready and some trail mix because we're hiking on QuickBooks Online, our audit trail to success. Here we are online in our browser looking for a QuickBooks Online test drive. Choosing the result that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left hand side. In the favorites, we're going to be right clicking on the balance sheet, open link in new tab. Right click on the profit and loss, open link in new tab. Let's go to that middle tab, close up the hamburger and do a range change. Bringing it back to 2023, 010123 tab, 123 tab. Run it to refresh it. We'll go to the tab to the right, close up the hamburger. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because Apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com and change the range once again. 010123 tab, 123123 tab. That's the setup process that we do every time. These are the two major financial statement reports, the balance sheet, the income statement, otherwise known as the profit and loss. We're now looking at other reports, most other reports, giving more information about one or multiple line items on one of these two major financial statement reports. This time we're looking basically at the balance sheet line item of accounts receivable. And the accounts receivable account is special in that it's tied to the customer. So this represents money that is owed to us. If I drill down on it, we do get a more detailed report, the transaction detail, basically a general ledger. But this is just giving us the information by date. We also need the information by who owes us the money because we want to be collecting on it. So let's go back and see that report. We're going to go back to the first tab here into our reports on the left hand side and scroll down to the section of who owes you money. These are the reports specifically kind of designed around the accounts receivable. We took a brief look at some of them in a prior presentation uh, in the reports overview section. We got the accounts receivable aging detail, the accounts receivable aging summary. Those are the main two reports that would probably that would be used to be tracking uh, the accounts receivable in addition to tracking the receivables internally in what I would call the customer center. And then we've got the uh, collections report. We've got the customer balance detail. This would be the most classic or uh, basic type of subsidiary report structure in a detailed format versus the summary format. And then we could have the invoices, which are basically the open invoices, which you would still think would be the balance uh, that is outstanding. Invoices and receipts, those are going to give us more detail about the two forms that are increasing and decreasing accounts receivable. The open invoices, invoices increase the receivables. If they have not been paid, then that would be tying in to the receivable. And then statement list terms, unbilled charges. These two have to do with charges that we have uh, made that we want to charge the customer for in the form of time that has been entered and expenses that we need to make an invoice for. So let's look at the most basic report first. Let's look at the customer balance summary. So I'm gonna right click on it and open link in a new tab. And if we check this one out, I'm gonna close up the hamburger and uh, the we'll, it's at uh, let's let's say let's go to the date range up top and say we want a, a custom range as of twelve thirty one two three. Now notice that this is a balance sheet report. 
that is still reporting as of a point in time. And this one only has that one date field to do an entry into because it's only that one point in time. And you can see here, it just gives us our, our customers and the amount that uh, they owe us. And if I go to the bottom of this report, we're at the 528152. That amount should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. If I go to the balance sheet over here, we're at the 528152. So that's just the most standard, basic kind of subsidiary report giving us more information, which should tie out to the parent account, in this case on the balance sheet accounts receivable. However, you probably don't use this report as much because you're gonna track the stuff that people owe you internally. So if I go to the first tab and I go to my reports, uh, I'm sorry, if I go to my sales area <laughs> and, then I, and then I go into the all sales, then in here we can we can sort our our uh, overdue invoices and our open invoices and so on so we have our invoices here i'm going to close this back out and if i go into uh if i've got my invoices it even gives us like a total down below but this total you, you might the total is really what you might want the subsidiary report for and then we have the invoices tab over here where i can do a similar process we have the overdue we've got the uh not due and i can also look at it this way with the status these are the unpaid invoices and if i scroll down doesn't give us the total on this report but when we're tracking them internally this is where we might go and then of course we have the customer tab which we where we can also track them and we might sort it by 20 open invoices here and now we can see you know the open uh invoices so so that's why this report is the classic sub ledger but we might not use it as much because we're kind of looking at those internal tools to help collect on the reports but it's important to note that this number should tie out to the balance sheet uh, number here okay and it pretty much always will by the way because when we do a journal entry into accounts receivable quickbooks forces us to add a customer so that it can create the sub ledger and so that the sub ledger doesn't get thrown off which is has its pros and cons but it's actually pretty nice let's go into the uh the reports again close up the hand boogie and go down to that was the customer balance summary let's go into the customer balance detail right click and open that report in a new link it's going to be on the right hand side let's do a range change up top i'm going to do a custom range uh 123123 actually a custom point in time <laughs> and then we have our detail so now we have the same information but it's giving us the detail of the invoices now basically we have open invoices because those are the things that are outstanding that's creating the the amount that is that is due at this point in time so again a lot of this stuff however you might then simply go to the internal reports to use so you might not use this one quite as much so so then we've got the customer uh balance summary we did that Here's the invoice list. If I right click and open up the invoice list and go into that one, let's close this up. So now we have our sorting of the invoices. I'm gonna switch it to the classic view uh, so I can see my date range up top going from 010123 to 123, and then I'm gonna run it. So now you've got your list of uh, invoices. So that's nice, but you might not need this quite as much because again, you can use the internal report. And if you wanted to filter, I could go into my, my balance sheet here, for example, and go into my accounts receivable. And I have my transaction detail uh, within here. And if I want to sort by transaction type, I could do that uh, using my filtering options and add a filter. And I want to sort by transaction type making it equal to and then an invoice invoice and then boom and filter it so i can get a similar you know report thusly uh as well so so there's just to show you that i'm going to go back on over exit and then we've got invoices and receive payment so this is both the increases and decreases if i open that link in a new tab let's check it out so we have uh, this here. Let's change the range. 010123, 1231. Uh, hold on. Still thinking. 
12, 31, 2, 3. And there's that report. So I'll close that up. So this gives us the increases and decreases. This is kind of nice because now it's given us the, you would think that you can change the detailed report to show both the increases and decreases, not just the open invoices. Uh, but this report gives you that more detail because I'd like to see if I was looking at the detail report, not just the outstanding invoices, but possibly being able to tick off the payment and the invoice. So you can see them kind of matched out. So that's uh, might be a, actually a more useful report in some ways so that you can see those tied out. Although you might check that information internally as well on a per client or per customer basis. Let's go back to the first tab. We've got the open invoices. If I right click and open that one and check it out, we're going to say, okay, this is going to be, let's make it as of 12, 31, 2, 3 tab, run it. So this it looks similar to another, to the other report where we have the detail of the accounts receivable because it's giving us information by customer and then the open invoices for the customer, meaning the invoices that have been entered and not yet paid, which will result in the increase in accounts receivable 5281452, you would think would be the same number here on the balance sheet. So there's that one statement list. And th then just these unbilled items, just to show you what those mean. If I go into the unbilled items, we can see that in here, we have time charge charges that have happened, meaning we've we've entered time into the system that we plan on pulling over into the invoice, but we have not yet pulled them over into the invoice. Therefore, this report doesn't actually reflect anything on the balance sheet or income statement, but rather is something that we need to do in the future. It's telling us, hey, you, if you create something for Amy's bird sanctuary, if I go over here and I say, boom, and make like an invoice for Amy's bird sanctuary, Amy's bird sanctuary, then it's I could pull this billable time in because I've entered it, but I haven't yet invoiced it. That's the idea. So I'm going to close that out. Yes. And then we go to the two main reports. First would be the accounts receivable aging summary, right click and open this one. The reason this one I would say is the main report that we would use is because most of the other reports, we already have a lot of that detail internally and what I would call the customer cycle or customer center. Over here, we have something added to that 12, 31, 2, 3. And that is that we have the past due columns up top. So this is the general format and we, we have the current amount. So we have still our customers on the left hand side. We have the amounts that have not yet been collected, which are current, which we're not too worried about at this point in time. And then the ones that are one to 30 days past due, 31 to 60 past due, 61 to 90 past due and 91 and over past due, and then our totals. So this report still gives us the total, which ties into what's on the balance sheet, but it breaks it out by how much is past due, which is important because uh, that will will tell us which clients and customers that we're skeptical about whether we're going to get paid. And that's going to tell us whether or not we want to do business with them, sell them anything further in the future. This is also the primary report used when we're trying to think about the likelihood of us collecting on the receivables. So whenever we make sales on receivables, we're running a risk that they don't actually pay the money because we already did the work. So if you're working with like, you know, dishonest people or something like that, uh, then it's likely that that you that you're going to have a, some portion of your receivables that you're never going to basically collect on. So then, so then, so this can help you to estimate what that is the portion you're not going to collect on. And at some point, if you have a lot in like over 90 days that are uncollected, you have to you have to cut your losses and let it go and possibly write it off if you're using a direct method. Uh, or, or an indirect, but it's a different write-off method. If you're using a, an, an allowance method of recording accounts receivable, the concept there, which usually happens for larger businesses because it's a little bit more difficult to deal with, but the concept is if I recorded revenue based on a sale 
And I know that some of those revenue items are not going to be collected because just of past history. I, if I know like 10% of my revenue isn't going to be collected, the revenue on account, the revenue that I sold with accounts receivable, I'm not going to collect on it. Well, then the sale didn't really happen kind of, right? So, I, so what I should be doing is recording the expense, bad debt expense, in the same point in time that I made the revenue sale if I could. But I can't really do that because I don't know how much revenue or how many, I don't know who's not gonna pay. I just have a pretty good idea based on past history that some people will not pay like 10%, let's say, or whatever, based on our calculations, based on the calculations from this report. Uh, and so what we're gonna do then is say that, is, is write, write it off already and then create an allowance account uh, under the accounts receivable for the amount of accounts receivable we don't expect to collect on. And that makes the, the balance sheet look more clean or be more fair or proper because instead of having 5,281.52 as an asset, it should really be that amount minus the amount that we pretty sure we're not gonna collect on even though we don't know who the deadbeats are yet, right? That aren't gonna pay. So, so and then when we, then when we write it off, we write it off to the, so that's the allowance method. You might use this report for that as well. We have a course on accounts receivable and allowance method. If that's an interesting topic you wanna to dig into in more detail. Uh, a lot of small businesses might not do it that way because of course it's tedious to do, but you can see why for external reporting purposes, it would be uh, a useful tool and it's generally accepted accounting principles typically. Okay, so then if we go into, oh, by the way, if I go back on over here, you have some formatting options so you've got your active cells, uh, you've got the aging uh, report dates. You can change the days per aging period if you wanted to, but this is pretty standard. So like this is usually standardized to some degree, but if you're using this for the calculation of allowance for doubtful account or something like that, you might want different periods uh, that might help you for your calculations and you can change those up top. All right, let's go back on over. We have the last one we'll look at, the accounts receivable aging detail, right-clicking, opening that one up, and we'll check it out. So I'm gonna change the date up top. This is gonna be uh, 123123, run it to refresh it. So there we have it. So now, instead of having the columns up top, the uh, times past due, because we want to see the invoices detail, we have the drop down here. So now we've got the drop down here for the 30 to 60 days. And then it gives us the specific invoices and you can see the different customers within it. And then we've got uh, the one to 30. Again, here's your categories. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the 31 to 60. This is 31 to 60. This is the one to 30. And then the current is on the bottom of this one. So more detailed report. So you might use these in conjunction with each other. You might look at this report and then think about, okay, let me look at these specific invoices that are in this category or like these overdue categories. Where's that $85, that specific invoice. If there were multiple items in there, it might be a little difficult to drill down on there. You can go over here and, fig and find it here. You can drill down on it here. You could also drill down on it here Right, and that's gonna give you your, your detail uh, as well, which you can further drill down on within here, right? So that's the general, and that takes you to the invoice. So that's the general uh, idea of the uh, aging reports. Accounts receivable for a larger business is gonna be, has, could have a whole department trying to collect on those, trying to collect on those accounts receivable, get the allowance accounts re reported uh, properly, and making sure everything's nice and clean in uh, that account, as well as the sub ledgers and all the customers are as happy as they can be uh, while hopefully paying us what they owe us.